Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question one from the Jan 2016 POA paper two. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So please be sure to check that out. And with that said, let's get into the solution. Okay, so as per usual, we're going to take a read of the information. So Jay Lambjack, who has been in business for several years as a sole trader, sole proprietor, sorry, provided you with the following information. So this is the 31st December 2015. We have equipment. We have a bank overdraft, 3700. We have a loan. Now there's a little extra piece. 50,000 due for repayment by March 2016. So 50,000 out of this 200,000 is due for repayment by March 2016. That's interesting. Fixtures and fittings, 18,000. Cash is 2,100. Inventory is 13,500. Land and building, a quarter million. Accounts payable, 6,100. Term deposit, three months. So a term deposit is like a short term deposit in a bank to earn a slightly higher interest than your regular checking or savings account. And account receivable, 4,200. What do they want us to do? So using the order of permanence, draw up a classified statement of financial position, balance sheet for J. Lamb Jack as at 31st December 2015 in the space provided, well, on that page. Okay, so order of permanence means you're going to start with the most permanent assets first, right? And those of you who have been following my series um, will know that, as I mentioned before, CSEC has been moving away from the working capital approach to balance sheets where you have current assets minus current liabilities, and they are more... They are, they are preferring nowadays the assets on top and the capital and liabilities below. So that's the approach I'm going to take. And I'm going to use a slightly different format in this particular solution than in previous ones. Because again, there's no one right format for a balance sheet. There's a minimum amount of information that's prescribed to be um, dis disclosed. And that's what I'm going to do. So let's start by heading up our statement. So J. Lampjack, statement of financial position at, as at 31st December 2015 and some dollar signs. So the first things would be our non-current assets. So our equipment, fixtures and fittings, land and building. So I'm going to start with the land and building, probably go to the fixtures and fittings, right? Then the equipment. And we're going to put a subtotal across here. So you're noticing I have three columns, right? So some people ask, so what goes where? Here what? My thing is, I like my rightmost column to have the least amount of detail. I like it to have the summary figures. And if you want to know more, go one space to the left, right? So you're going to see my details of my non-current assets here and my subtotal there. Next, current assets. So we know we have stock. Uh, of course, we have debtors, account receivable, this term deposit. Uh, we have cash, right? Bank overdraft is a current liability, so that does not go in current assets. So current assets. So inventory, account receivable, term deposit, cash, and a subtotal. Now, some of you may be wondering, why did I not put term deposit before account receivable, right? So you could do that because remember order of permanence, right? Account receivable, we expect to collect usually within 30 days, but I mean, the reality of business is sometimes it takes three to six months to collect receivables, right? But again, if you want to put term deposit on top there, um, like that, <coughs> we have a line here with the subtotal for non-current assets, a line here with the subtotal for current assets, and we have, we add them together to get total assets. Of course, total assets has to be financed by capital and liabilities. So the capital, we do not have. So we're gonna to have to work backwards to get that. So let's start off with the non-current liabilities. So we have a loan. Now the loan amount is 200,000. Out of that 200,000, 50,000 is due for repayment March 2016. The current date to which the financial statement is being drawn up is the 31st of December 2015. March 2016 is within less than a year for sure. So that 50,000 cannot be classified, properly classified as non-current. So you're going to have to take out that 50,000 from the 200. Once again, because non-current liabilities are repayable within more, oh, sorry, after more than one year has passed, right? So what's going to happen is we're going to have to deduct that 50,000 from the 200 to get the correct amount for non-current liabilities, right? So we're going to put that long-term loan, 150,000 there, right? There were no other non-current liabilities, so we could leave it by itself. Now, current liabilities, what do we have? Well, the bank overdraft for sure. Uh, I'm seeing accounts payable, so it might just be those. Oh, no, and don't forget the 50,000 piece I just talked about. All right, so we're going to call that, right, so accounts payable, bank overdraft, and I call that the current portion of long-term debt. 
Okay, now you may call it something different. If you call that something different, let me know in the comment section below. All right, so we're going to put a subtotal for current liabilities. We're going to add those two things together to give us total liabilities of 209800 And of course, that's going to give us a total capital and liabilities of 422800 because it has to match up here, which means we can now work backwards. We can now use our accounting equation, assets minus liabilities equal to capital, to work out the capital figure up here. Right, so you're seeing the working inside of there as well, right? You're seeing 422,800, the assets total, minus the liabilities total, 209,800 for the capital figure of 213,000. All right, if you have any questions on this particular financial statement, if you found I did something different or you want to know why, please let me know in the comment section below. Right now, let's just, let me just switch my screens and we'll go on to the next part of the question. Okay, so this is part B to this question. It says the table below shows the opening balances at the beginning of November for assets, liabilities, and capital for St. Jude's business. So we have this item here, right? So we have three assets, liabilities, and capital. And we have a bunch of transactions here, but what do they want us to do? Complete the table above to show the effect of each transaction on the opening balances. Use plus and minus signs appropriately. Transaction one is done for you. So transaction one, right? It says bought motor vehicles costing 12,000 on credit. So if you buy motor vehicles, your assets are going to increase. So you've seen a plus 12,000 there. And if you buy it on credit, it means you didn't pay for it, which means you currently owe money for it. So you're going to see your liabilities going up as well, because when you buy something on credit and you owe money, that's a liability, which is increasing in this case. So let me just start to populate my little table across here. So as you can see, I started off with the opening balances, 600,000, 400,000, 200,000. Six minus four is two, or four plus two is six, whichever way you do it. Um, first transaction I populated there already. Now, the next thing, the owner took goods costing $500 for his personal use. Okay, that's drawings. Drawings is a reduction in capital. So capital is going to go down as well as assets because goods or stock or inventory is an asset. And if the owner's taking that out of the business, that is decreasing. So you're going to see a, a minus five under the assets and a minus five under capital, right? So my, I like to put my negative things in brackets, right? You may, you may use a minus sign. Actually, that's what the question said to this. It used plus and minus, all right? Next, it said bought goods for 900 on credit from R. James. So if you bought goods, goods is an asset, it's increasing. So we're going to have to put 900 under the assets column. If you bought it on credit, it means, again, you didn't pay for it, which means your liabilities are going up as well. So as we see here, assets and liabilities are both going up by 900. Next, it says paid mortgage 1500 by check. So your mortgage is a liability. If you pay a piece of your mortgage, you are paying back some of what you owe, which means that your liability is going down. It also means because you are paying back, you are using up some of your money. Right? You're using money out of your bank because it said check. So assets and liabilities will be decreasing by 1500 in this case. Next, right? the owner settled an amount of 15000 owed by the business to you long from his personal savings. Okay, this type of thing almost always causes confusion. First things first. So if the owner settled an amount of 15000 owed by the business, it means the owner paid off something the business owed. So the liability of the business is going to go down. Right, so you're going to see that there first. Um, but what's happening is capital is also increasing. So most times people think about, sir, if the owner is using up, using up his money, capital decreasing. And I'm like, I understand what you're saying, but think about it this way. The owner is not taking money out of the business, right, to pay something for the business. The owner is actually using his personal funds from outside of the business to pay something in for, well, technically inside of the business realm, right, of, of the realm of its business activities. So money from outside of the business, the owner's money is being used to pay for something inside of the business, right? So what's happening is the owner's putting more of his or her personal funds into the business to pay off something. So that's why capital is increasing. If you're still not 100% sure about it, message me in the comments below, we can get a discussion going, all right? And the final transaction here, so, right, so this is another one they like to bring. Um, to bought office furniture costing 3500 So assets going to go up by 3500 The owner made a down payment of 500 So the down payment, or by check, so it said down payment by check. So it means that we used up some money from the bank. So your assets also have to go down by 500 and promise to pay the balance in three months, the installment. So the balance, if you bought something for 3500 and you only paid 500 it means you still owe 3000 So that's your liability. So we're going to have a couple of things going on here. 
So assets are going to go up by 3,500, the value of the office furniture, and it's also going to go down by 500, the amount you paid by check. And liabilities are going to go up by 3,000. Now the net increase in assets is 3,000. So your assets and your liabilities are both increasing by the same amount. And you're going to have a total there um, for each column, 6, 1, 3, 900 here, 3994, 2145. And if you want to confirm, right, if you add up the 3994 and the 2145, you get back 639. Or you can do 639 minus 3994. Cool. Okay, so folks, there you have it. That's about it for this question. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you know every time I drop a new video. And don't forget to check out my website for some free payway handouts. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.